What up, world? And welcome back to another episode of the Seeds of Success podcast. This is your host, Colin Walters, and I'm so excited to bring to you another live interview episode here today with my man, Mario Minner. Mario and I actually connected over Instagram, of all things, and I stumbled across his podcast, loved everything that he was about, reached out, and here we are. Um, Mario is a success coach. He's an endurance athlete. He's a podcaster. He's a father of two beautiful baby girls, and he is an awesome husband to his wife. And Mario was challenged to a sprint triathlon back in 2013. And at the time, he did not own a bike. He was not a runner or a swimmer, but he signed up anyways. He fell in love with the sport and the process of training for a goal, and he's been obsessed ever since. Since then, Mario has completed two Ironman events, um, five Ironman 70.3s, Everesting 29029, and a 50K, a 50-miler, 50 100-mile ultra marathon, which he just completed and we dive into on the podcast here today. And now as a certified life coach, he helps others make similar breakthroughs in sports, life, and business. Above all of this, Mario believes that we are all far more powerful and capable than we believe. The real benefit from training for races is not the actual event, but the person that you become in pursuing and achieving the goal. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited to bring to the show Mario Minner. Here we go. Mario, welcome to the, the Seeds of Success podcast. Good to have you. Colin, I'm super excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man, been been looking forward to this. I know that we just chatted offline for about 20 minutes and probably could have made an episode out of that. So we figured it was about time to hit the record button and get this thing rolling. So thanks for thanks for jumping on. And I was very excited to have you on, especially with everything that you have just accomplished, which, you know, we'll save that here for a minute, uh, leave the little bit of suspense, but also everything that you've done to get to this point. I mean, you have a podcast of your own, your business, which we can dive into. Um, and so really just want to say thanks. Thanks for jumping on and, and super excited to have you here. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm super pumped. I mean, we've got a lot of similarities between the entrepreneurship, between digging into endurance, mindset, leadership, all of that stuff. So I'm excited to dig in. No doubt. Well, let's go ahead and, and dive in. So you just completed a hundred mile race. And I would say, let's start there because that is probably the freshest thing we can talk about. First off, congratulations on not only accomplishing it, right, but all the work that goes into it. And yeah, you know, six months of training, you, you know, um, but it's more than that. Like we, we know that there's years of training that have gone into this with your Ironmans, your um, your, your swimming and your biking that I see you doing your, your trip, like everything that goes into it. Congrats on your hundred miler. I'd say let's, let's dive in. How was it? How are you feeling? <laughs> Maybe give the audience a little background on the hundred mile race. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the crazy thing about this is I just did a hundred mile ultra marathon, but four years ago, I had a friend who, uh, we were working out at the time and he is somebody who had done multiple ultra marathons. And at the time he said, Hey, would you ever do a hundred mile ultra? And I immediately said, no, because I didn't think that I was capable of doing that. Mm -hmm. And that was just three or four years ago. And I, I instantly said no, because at that point in time, it wasn't even in my mind that that was something that I could do. Um, because I, I never really considered myself to be a runner. I was always an athlete, mm -hmm. but just over time from doing different endurance events and starting to build up to different distances, you, you build up that endurance, you build up the belief in yourself. And I started trying different events. And so after doing uh, an Ironman, I started thinking like, what's something else that I want to get into? And I started getting into trail runs and I just started with a 25 K race, which is around 15 miles. And then I built my way up to a 50 K and then I built my way up to a 50 miler. And then just recently I did my hundred mile ultra. And I just want to tell that story first, because I think a lot of people 
who are listening to this might be in that place that I was four years ago and think, oh my gosh, like a hundred mile ultra. There's absolutely no way that I could do that. Um, but I've been there and it's, it's kind of just part of this process of challenging yourself, signing up for a race, putting yourself out there and, and building that belief in yourself. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it, look at how far you've come in four years, right? From initially, your immediate response was no, right? Which I think is so interesting because as human beings, for something that we don't understand, like, for example, you probably didn't understand that you yourself could run that far at, you know, some given point in time. Like we can be very easy to just shut down um, options or shut down things that are foreign concepts to us. But it's like, it goes right in line with, you know, how we can really be limitless. It, it's just a matter of what do we essentially believe ourselves to be capable of achieving, right? But over four years, it was day by day actions that you took, right, to get there. And you started with, you know, obviously not a hundred mile race, but you progressed, right? Half Ironman, full Ironman, 50K, 50 miler, 100 miler. And so to go from where you were four years ago to where you are today, having just completed the 100 mile race is just a testament to what belief in yourself and honestly, consistent daily strategic action can do. Um, what were some of the things that, I mean, granted, you know, all the training that goes into it, how did the actual race go? Like, what were some of your, your takeaways from the race? How'd you get through it? I'm sure. I, you know, I know that you battled through some, some low moments for sure. Like maybe tell the audience. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, first this was my, my big misogi, my big challenge for the year. And this is something that I signed up for over a year ago. And so uh, it's something that I was really looking forward to. It's something that I was committed to, and I put a lot of training in. Um, and one of the things outside of the training that I did is I talked to other people who have done hundred mile ultras and I asked them like, Hey, this is my first race. What should I know? And one of the consistent things that kept coming back was there are going to be highs and lows. Like you need to be prepared for multiple highs and multiple lows. And so I knew that going into it, but, uh, before the race, I was actually pretty calm and I felt really good. And, uh, I started off in the, the first mile and just kind of took it really easy. And my strategy going into it was I was just going to try and run at a really slow pace with a low heart rate that I could sustain for 50 or 60 miles. And then I was planning on switching to a run walk strategy where you run for about seven minutes and then you walk for three. Um, but it was about 15 to 16 miles into it where I started to slow down and at that point in time, I was, I, I started doubting myself a little bit because in my training, I had done 20, 25, 30 mile runs mm -hmm. and I felt good in those runs to, so to start to have like <laughs> some, some doubts 15 or 16 miles into it and starting to think like, oh my gosh, I'm only 15 miles into it. I've got 85 left. Like you start to doubt yourself and then you just kind of keep going and try and focus on one step at a time, one mile at a time. And then a few miles after that, I started feeling a little bit nauseous. And that is when it started to get really hard for me um, because I started to not only doubt my ability to do it, but I started thinking, oh my gosh, I'm nauseous and I'm only 20 miles into it. The rest of this race is going to be a battle. It's going to be a struggle. Um, but I've been through enough of these endurance events and endurance challenges to know that when you're in those low moments, that is a temporary feeling and it's a, it's a problem and solution mindset that you need to have. And so when I started feeling nauseous, I started to realize, all right, I've got to switch something up with my nutrition. Uh, so at the next aid station, I started to switch the nutrition that I was using and I uh, started to take some like Tums and different things to help with nausea. And once I started to make some of those changes, my body started to feel better and I started to kind of come out of that low. And uh, I had a, a kind of a really cool surprise at about mile 25. I was heading into an aid station and I see my wife and I see my daughters. And then I look over by the aid station and I see two of my best friends who had traveled three hours to come and surprise me. And 
that is like, that was such a cool moment for me because I was in a low, I was struggling, but to see some of your best friends and your family that really boosts your spirit in a situation like that. And so between the nutrition, between seeing friends and family, I started to feel a lot better. And I started just kind of chipping away at some of the miles and I ended up switching to the seven, three strategy Mm -hmm. earlier in the race than I had intended. But by doing that, making all those decisions, like I really started to feel a lot better. And, uh, I don't know if I, if you want to jump in here with any, any thoughts there before I keep going. Yeah, I got, um, you know, a couple of things that come to mind is, you know, first off seeing people that you love and having them in the journey with you and doing it together, like that alone, it takes care of part of the mental battle. Right. And I think the key word that you said there was spirits, like just being able to, to make like positively influence our spirit, man, can take you a long way, um, you know, and people and human connection, especially with those that we love can do that. Super cool that they showed up, by the way. Like, yeah, I was just like completely surprised. I had never even, I'd never even thought uh-huh. that some of my friends would travel to come and be there on my big day. But it, it's one of those things that really stood out to me about this experience, which is may, way more than running which is I, fe- I felt so much love and support from friends, from family, from the community of people on Instagram that had been messaging me and reaching out and people sent me video messages and texts and calls. And that was really one of my biggest takeaways from all of it is that I want to show up for people in the way that others showed up for me in such a big day in my life. Um, because that's the type of thing that that helps you endure challenges. It's the love and support from uh, the closest people around you. And uh, like you talked about, that kind of boosted my spirits. And so uh, at about mile 30, I started switching to the run seven minutes, walk three minutes, and I started to feel amazing. And so the next like 20 uh, miles were, were really fun and they were like enjoyable. It was like this high that I was experiencing. And, um, you know, about mile 50 or so my feet started hurting a little bit and it started to be tough again, to just kind of put one foot in front of the other. And then boom, again, I had another surprise, which was that my boss and his wife drove a couple hours to come surprise me halfway through the race. And so again, it's just like another like boost that I got at the perfect moment. Um, halfway through, I switched out my shoes, switched out my socks which helped. And then, uh, the second half of the race in an, in an ultra marathon, you get pacers. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I would get my wife, uh, as a pacer at mile 57 or 58. And then my older brother as a pacer around mile uh, 70. And so just a quick story, like I've been getting a lot of support and encouragement from this race, but my wife deserves so much credit Mm -hmm. because she is not a runner. Um, but she decided to train and be a pacer for me. And she ended up running 12.7 miles, which was the longest that she had ever done. And uh, we just had so much fun at that point in the race. And I know that this is something that we were talking about even before this, that it's mile 57, 60, 65 of an ultra marathon. And I thought that that was going to be like the lowest, hardest point. But at that point in time, I was just running with my wife, it was pitch black. The stars were out. We're laughing. We're listening to music. It was so much fun. I completely forgot that I was in an, a hundred mile ultra, which I thought was going to be the hardest challenge of my whole life. But there I am, we're running, we're hanging out and we're just having fun. And I think that that's a really cool, like powerful lesson in, in this. I think that is such a magical word of what you just said. And something that we can oftentimes forget to do is have fun, right? Like, absolutely. I mean, like, why, why do you sign up for a big challenge like this in the first place? Like, yes, part of it is to challenge yourself, but it is really play. It is something that we love to do as athletes. And I think, especially in endurance sports, when you think of an endurance challenge, like a marathon, like an Ironman, like an ultra, Mm -hmm. a lot of people think like, it's this really tough, hard, like gritty thing. But when you approach it from a place of 
I, I love this. Mm-hmm. I I'm enjoying this. And you approach it from that mindset. It, you get a different outcome and you feel grateful for the progress that you're making. You feel grateful for the people that you're surrounded by. And it, it's just like this amazing uh, feeling to be in that situation. And I think the, the key that you said there is like, you go in with that mindset, right? And with that mindset, you, you are inherently seeing things in that way, right? So then everything in its own becomes fun. It, it's that much more fun to see your buddies that surprise you. It's that much more fun to run with your wife. Like you're seeing the stars, you're enjoying mile 57, as opposed to, you know, drudging through it. And a key, another key word, I think that you mentioned earlier was experience, right? Like it's this overall experience as opposed to this like one time stringent event that you're just trying to do and move past. But, you know, when you look back on it and you reflect on everything that happened, it's like this experience that you'll always remember, right? For, for those memories that you created, go, go ahead. I see you're going to, you want to say something. Yeah, well, I, I think that that is really the philosophy mm-hmm. that that you can have to get the most out of an endurance challenge, out of a misogi, is to view it as a, a as a life experience. Because when you go into an event and you view it just as an event, it's the type of thing where you maybe train for it, but you show up, you get your medal, and you leave. When you think of an event, it just it comes, it goes, and it's over. But when you think about it as an experience. When you complete the event, when you view it as, as the journey along the way and you complete it, and then you have that time after to reflect and to learn and to try and apply what you learned into every area of your life, that's what makes it a more lifelong or life-changing experience. And that's really how I try and view these types of events is I view it as, as an experience. I view it as a personal development journey more so than just an, an event or just a, an endurance sport. It's way more, way more than that. And I, I mean, you're spot on with reflection, right? Like, I think it's so important. It can be very easy to skip over. And that goes with anything in life, right? Whether it's an endurance event, whether it's, you know, a new job that you've taken on, whether it's the entire experience of, I haven't gone through it, but I know you have two young, two young girls, right? But um, parenting, fatherhood, motherhood, you know, um, having gone through any sort of tragedy or, or success and, and accomplishment, like just the, the ability to take a step back and actually reflect on the experience of itself, right? The lessons that you can take away, what you enjoyed, um, you know, just, th- just that entire um, uh, journey of reflecting on the experience itself is something that I'm glad that you talk about the importance of that because it's something that I myself do as well. Big journaler, write notes down, write things down all the time, like just trying to capture those thoughts because they're powerful to use in the future and to share with others, right? Which I know that you and I have have talked about um, o- offline. There was you know the the importance of being able to share with others. So, um, you have anything to to share there? Yeah, well, I think that that's where a a 100 mile ultra is so unique because you're out there for 20 to 24 hours. And so you're in the moment, there are highs and there are lows, but there is even during the race, there was a lot of time for me to just reflect on my journey, on how far I've come, on how many people have helped me, on all of the lessons that I've learned. And that was something that I was really intentional about even during the end of the race. And I think where we kind of left it off before was, you know, my wife was pacing me and she was awesome. We were having so much fun. She got me to mile 70. um, And then my brother, uh, my older brother uh, came and he ran the last, or he ran 20 miles with me. And it was the same thing. We're just, it's just like we were hanging out like kids just playing. And um, it, at that point, we were still doing the, the run uh, seven minutes, walk three minutes strategy. And I felt as strong in mile 70 and 80 and 85 as I did at mile 20 or 25. And just reflecting on that in the moment, I was blown away mm-hmm. by how strong and how powerful and how capable we really are. Um, because going back to it, four years ago, I didn't think that I could do this. 
And then here I am, I'm in the moment, I'm in mile 70, I'm in mile 75, I'm in mile 85. And I almost feel like I'm getting stronger, or I feel like I'm able to sustain that. And so that is a reflection that I was able to have during the race while I was out there, um, you know, having this experience. And so it's just a really, really powerful thing. And then just to finish it up with, with how the, the race ended, my brother uh, stopped at mile 90, and then I had the last 10 miles uh, to myself. And this was probably the second hardest part of the race because I was 20 miles into it. I knew I just had 10 miles left, but it was so hard at that point in time. My feet were hurting. My legs were heavy. My knees started hurting. And so at that point, it just becomes a mental battle more than a physical one. And you need to take those 10 miles and you need to break it down. And so I really tried to break it down into one mile at a time, uh, trying to focus on a mantra of just like one step at a time, keep chipping away, um, staying focused, staying present, and really just trying to chip away at those last few miles. And then uh, just the feeling of, of crossing the finish line after 22 hours and, and 30 minutes, um, you're at, mostly out there by yourself. It was dark. Uh, just seeing the finish, finish line uh, lit up, hearing people cheering uh, was, was one of my, my favorite feelings. And it's just, it's this feeling that I keep coming back to. And maybe you've experienced it before. Anybody who's listening to this, when you cross the finish line in an ultra marathon or in a triathlon or in any sort of challenge like that, it is the best feeling of accomplishment and transformation and growth. And it's the type of feeling that I want everybody to experience. And you don't actually need to do a hundred mile ultra marathon to experience that feeling, but it's just pick something, mm -hmm. pick a challenge that you feel good about. Pick a challenge that scares you a little bit. Pick a challenge that you can put your heart and soul into and stick with it and achieve it. And that will give you that feeling. Um, and I don't know. I mean, do you have any thoughts on that of just like that feeling of accomplishment whenever you face or whenever you complete any, any type of goal? Yeah, I have lots of thoughts. And I think that for the listeners here, I, I love what Mario's talking about, which is find whatever your hundred mile race is to you, right? Whether that's, Absolutely. you know, maybe you want to publish a book. Maybe you want to get started with a 5k, a 10k. Maybe you want to um, like start a podcast. Mario has his podcast. We finally got the seeds of success back up and running here. You know, maybe whatever that is for you, like, um, you know, just to, to go challenge yourself to do something, but have fun doing it right? And something that you're going to enjoy the process of doing, um, you know, and, and something that I was, I've been thinking about over the last couple of weeks is this idea of like living within that 4%, right? So like just outside of your comfort zone, right? But not so far that you're just going to, you know, either fail miserably and not want to do it at all. But like, that 4% outside of your comfort zone where you are continuously stretching yourself a little bit at a time to where it's challenging, right? But you're locked into it. Um, you know, I got that from a book through uh, Colin Henderson is a uh, mental performance coach. And, you know, that that's where I got it from some years ago. I've been thinking about it recently. And it's just like that, that way to, you know, really just challenge yourself. But it, it, you know, it allows you to get in that flow state is what he really touched on. Um, and so whatever that means to you as the audience, right, is um, I, I like the call to action there, Mario. Yeah, well, because I think that even like going back, like this 100 mile ultra started. It started with a no. Hey, yeah, it, it, it started, started with, with a no. no. <laughs> but even even before that, like it started like eight years before <laughs> when I was not even in endurance sports. And the first thing that I got challenged to was sprint triathlon. Yeah. And that was uh, at the time I wasn't a swimmer. I wasn't a runner. I didn't own a bike, but I signed up for it. And I loved that challenge. And that, that is really like a, a small challenge in comparison to the hundred mile ultra, but it's what got me that first feeling of committing to a goal. It got me that first feeling of 
like pushing through obstacles and like overcoming self-doubt and overcoming a lack of motivation in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it, it led me on this journey. And so I think for so many people listening to this, it, like you don't need to start with this insane big goal, start with something that's small, start with something that's manageable and get that feeling of success and master that art of showing up. And start with where you're at, like, you know, get, oh, basically just right in line with everything that you're saying, right? Everyone's at their own different points in life. Start with where you are right now, knowing that ultimately, you know, maybe that is somewhere you want to go, but what is, you know, what can you accomplish reasonably within the next four to six months while being smart and strategic about it, but challenging yourself at the same time to ultimately get to where you want to go. Like same thing for me, the first thing that I ever started with was, you know, like small five, 10 Ks, and then ultimately did a half marathon and then did a sprint triathlon, entire bike malfunction, chain fell off. Oh no. Doing with bikes, like walked my bike back to the starting line. That's my attempt at a triathlon at this point in my life. Um, I'm signed up for Ironman Coeur d'Alene next summer and have a couple marathons in between. And, you know, that's so awesome. Then a couple like 40 plus milers, but the the point being, um, you know, we started, we started with that first 5k, right. Um, started with getting a side ache in the first mile, realistically back in the college <laughs> days and like trying to figure out life. So, um, but then again, you just fall in love with the process and then, you know, you, you have an accomplishment. I think going back to the reflection point is super big and then deciding, okay, after some time has gone by what's next. Right. And I think that's an, that's an important question to ask after the accomplishment, after the reflection period. And then, you know, you kind of, then we are left with the whole, where are we going now from here? Where, you know, set a goal, reach it, raise the bar sort of idea. So. Yeah. I think that there's a delicate balance there too, yeah. because, you know, as a, as an achiever, as somebody who's really pursuing a life of mastery of trying to become the best version of yourself, it's good to have goals and it's good to have goals that are bigger that stretch you and force you to think bigger. But one thing that I've, I've learned, or I've sometimes I've, I've fallen into is just, if you're just constantly chasing the next goal, then you're missing out on some of the growth that can happen from having that period of reflection. Yep. And so what I like to do is build in some of that reflection along the way. And then even after I complete a big race, like I just did, um, I take some time to rest to reflect, like, what are the biggest lessons that I learned and how can I apply that to every area of my life, not just sports, but to business, to uh, my podcast, to my, uh, to my work, to my relationship with my wife and, uh, and with my kids. And when you go about it that way, I think you get the best of both worlds and you can reflect on what did I learn from this past goal and this past experience that can help me figure out what comes next. And uh, I just think that's really important to have both of those, both the reflection and then figuring out what's next. And it sounds like you, you, you're a believer of that as well. hundred percent. And for the audience listening, Mario, what does the take away something that we can go and apply right away or apply within our, our own way of doing it? What does your reflection period actually look like? As in, what do you actually do for your reflection period? Is it, do you take a walk and think about these things? Do you take a walk and write them down in your phone, like in your notes section? Do you, you know, take a pen to paper and write things out and then document it somehow? Like, what do you actually do uh, for, for anybody listening to go and, and actually implement and apply into their own ways? Such a good question. And I think, Really what I do is I always, after the race, I just take some time to be grateful for the people around me, be grateful for the experience. And then I really just ask myself a couple of questions. What did I learn from this process? What did I learn about myself through this process? And how can I use those two things to help me figure out what's next? So as an example, one of the biggest things that I learned from training for this hundred mile ultra and competing it is how misogies are best when you do it with the people that you love. 
And when I think about, I've done three big endurance challenges this year. I've done the Goggins challenge where you run four miles uh, every four hours for 48 hours straight. Um, I've, I did an Ironman um, in June, and then I did this 100 mile ultra. And my favorite races that I've done are the Goggins challenge and this 100 mile ultra. And the reason why is because those other challenges are ones that you get to do with other people. You get to do it with your friends and family. And I included friends and family in both of those experiences. So when I think about what did I learn, I learned that my soul is ignited when I'm doing something hard with people that I love. Mm -hmm. So when I'm trying to figure out what am I going to do next, I'm going to try and look for types, the types of challenges that can stir up that same feeling. And so I, I go through that process of reflection. Um, I have some you know, time where I just like write things down. And then I also try and share what I'm learning along the way on my podcast. Uh, which is called talking endurance and mastery. And we were, we were talking about that before that a big part of why I go through these experiences is to document what I'm learning with other people so that they can have success so that they can become the best versions of themselves. And so that I can even learn from other people who are listening to the podcast and, and conversations that, that come out of it just like this one that we're having right now. And so the, the learning process and the reflection is just naturally baked into everything that I do as a creator and as a podcaster. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's different ways that you go about it. You think about it, you actually document it, like put out content for it in a podcast form and in, you know, in a video form, whether that be Instagram or, or different means of, of media content right? So then that helps with your reflection. And also you're able to share what you've been reflecting on with others in hopes of inspiring, teaching, and, you know, being, being able to help others in, in those ways. Um, did, I, did I miss anything there or any other, um, any other, other ways or? No, no, you nailed it. I mean, it's, it's exactly the type of thing that you're doing with this podcast, which I love the mission of this podcast, you know, seeds of success is you're trying to discover seeds from other people, other entrepreneurs, other athletes, business owners, but you're also sharing your own seeds of success. And I, you know, for anybody that's listening, you know, if you're on a, a personal development journey, I think that's great. And, and you, you want to become the best version of yourself and you want to read and you want to listen to audiobooks and you want to listen to podcasts and you want to do everything that you can to learn and grow. And then eventually you reach a point where the next level of growth for you is to contribute to the growth of other people. And that's where the podcast, that's what the podcast is for me. It's, it's trying to document what I'm learning, share what I'm learning and use that as a learning process for myself to learn from other people that engage with it. It's that next level up right there is taking everything that you've learned and then exactly. sharing it, right? Each one teach one sort of idea. So Shifting, shifting gears, since we're on the topic of your podcast, why don't you tell the audience, um, you know, a little bit about your podcast and, you know, just to, just to wrap it up, Mario, congrats on your, your race, man. Like that is <laughs> awesome stuff. And thank you for sharing your experience, what you've learned, uh, your reflection points. And it's honestly super inspiring. And I loved the seven, three model. And it was something I wanted to very briefly insert in here because I think it, it helps you as the individual change the focus from this hundred mile race to a seven minute period to a three minute period, right? To get to mile 57 to go run with your wife, right? To get to mile, what was it? Uh, 70 with your brother, um, exactly. right? So it, it's those checkpoints right? And it's setting those manageable objectives to get to the, you know, when you, the aggregate, some of those objectives being the overall hundred mile race, right? But I think that was one last thing I wanted to make sure, because I was thinking about it when we were, when we were chatting there, that, that seven, three, and it also put your ego in check uh, <laughs> a little bit. I would imagine it would, at least Absolutely. I'm like, damn, like I'm hurting at mile 20, I'm 18. Like I did 35 miles easy in these training runs. Like, why am I hurting now? So to you know, have the idea that you were going to do the seven, three at mile 50, but then you're doing it 30 miles earlier. It says a lot about, um, 
obviously discipline, but being able to put your ego in check and then, you know, just do what is going to ultimately be a good decision in that moment for the long-term benefit of the overall goal. I think. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that you highlighted this because this is one of the most powerful things that I've learned from doing any endurance challenge. And it's really even more than an endurance challenge. It's any big goal that you have. If that's like you mentioned earlier, writing a book, starting a podcast, launching a project, um, any big goal that you have, really, when your brain starts to think about it, when, when my brain started to think about running 100 miles, it freaked out that it's just, it's so overwhelming to even think about that. Mm -hmm. But if you're able to break it down and almost reframe it, and one of the things that I did is I told myself, well, I'm not going to be running 100 miles. I'm going to be running 10 miles 10 times. Mm -hmm. It's the same number, but it's just broken down in a different way. Endurance events are really about taking a big challenge and breaking it down into small manageable pieces. And that's something that I've applied to my podcast, to my business, and really anything that I do where I'm going after something big and challenging and I start to feel overwhelmed. And so I just want to highlight that it's such a powerful strategy that you can use with any big goal. And so just to highlight a little bit more about what you're saying is um, I, during that race, I started doing running seven miles or seven for running for seven minutes at a 10, 10, 30 pace, and then walking for three minutes at about a 16 to 17 minute per mile pace. And breaking it down in that way is what allowed me to feel so strong at mile 80 or 85, as I did at mile 20 or 25, because if I would have just kept trying to run even at a lower heart rate, that whole time, I would not have been able to sustain that for a hundred miles. And I just think it's such a powerful strategy to not only to go far and do a long ultra marathon or even a marathon, but for anybody who's a just getting into running and just even anybody who says like, I'm not a runner, I would really recommend that you try this strategy because it is something that is much more manageable and it's going to give you that feeling of, of success. It's going to give you that feeling of like, you're going to almost impress yourself with how good you'll feel. If you just go a slow pace for seven minutes, then walk for three minutes and you can adjust those intervals as well. And so it's just something that was a really powerful takeaway for me, not just for long races, but also for beginners, um, also for people who are just getting into running. And uh, it's just something that I really want more people to know about and more people to start to utilize. And thank you for the, the breakdown of it, for the, the actual detailed explanation of what it is kind of thought process behind it and very, very applicable to whatever you're doing, right? Whatever goal that may be, you can think about it in, you know, the idea of a, of a sprint and then a rest and then a sprint and then a rest. Like, you know, you're working on a project, you go 50 minutes on, you go 10 minutes off, right? Put your own spin on it for whatever endeavor you are, you know, you're going through and then, you know, you can make it your own. But um, so thank, thank you for, for highlighting that and, and sharing that. And so, now we can go to the podcast now that we got that uh, out of the way. So um, so you have a podcast and you have about almost 500 episodes here, Mario. So why don't you tell the, the audience what your podcast is? I know you mentioned it, um, how it got started, how it's you know gotten to this point. I know some of the details, but I, I won't spoil it for the audience here. So why don't you go ahead and, and share a little bit about it? Yeah. And I think that it, it is like a segue into the podcast, but I think you might even hear some consistent themes between the way that I think about and I approach a podcast and the way that I think about and I approach an endurance event. Mm -hmm. um, but the story behind it, well, actually, first of all, it's called Talking Endurance and Mastery. Okay. And uh, the story behind it is in 2020, um, I was at that point where I felt called to start to share some of the things that I was learning. And I wasn't really sure what form that should take. Should I start posting on Instagram? Should I start a podcast? Should I write a book? Should I start a blog? And I tried a couple of different things, but for whatever reason, I was just like, I want to start a podcast. Mm -hmm. I love listening to podcasts. It's one of my favorite methods of learning. It suits uh, my lifestyle. It's something that I can listen to when I'm training. And so I decided I'm going to start a podcast. 
And I got really excited and I published two episodes. And then I lost that inspiration. I lost motivation and I didn't publish anything for about six or seven months. And it just kind of, I let it drop. Then six or seven months go by and I catch that inspiration, that inspirational feeling again. And I felt like I'm ready to publish. I'm ready to uh, talk about and, and share lessons that I've learned. But I knew this second time around, if I was going to start to publish, I needed to really be committed to it. And so what I decided to do is I committed to doing a, a, a publishing a podcast episode every single day for a year. And I set out and I did that. And what I did is I um, just told stories and I shared lessons that I was learning from training for endurance races, um, becoming a, a father uh, for the first time. I talked about my faith. I talked about leadership lessons that I'm learning at work and through growing uh, my own business. And I did an episode for the first four days in a row. I literally just took my phone, hit record, and I published episodes. But like we talked about, I was afraid of what people would think. Mm -hmm. um, I was afraid of how people would react to it. And so I didn't really tell anybody about it, but I was committed to my goal. And so I just kept publishing and I kept publishing and I kept publishing until it was about, I was about 150 or 200 episodes into it. And there were days when I just did not want to do it at all. I was not motivated, but I was committed. And so I just kept doing episodes mm -hmm. and uh, I reached a point, it was around episode like 199 where I was just like not seeing results. And I'm like, ah, maybe I should just give up. Maybe I should just quit. But it's in those moments that it kind of tests your commitment. It tests your why. And I just kept going. And then about, I think it was maybe 225, I was talking to some friends and they were like, hey, like it came up that I have a podcast. And I'm like, yeah, I've got a podcast. And they're like, how many episodes have you done? I'm like 220. They're like, what? You've done 220 episodes? I'm like, yeah, I haven't really told too many people about it. And they're like, you need to tell people about this. And so even though I was afraid of what people would think, I was afraid of judgment. I ended up just doing this big post on Facebook. Mm. It's like, hey, friends and family, I've set this goal of publishing an episode every day for a year. I'm like 200 and something episodes into it. Would love if you would listen to it in your, in your support. So many people commented. I got all these messages. Wow. Some people were like mad at me for not telling me earlier. And when I did that, I realized how how much that limiting belief of the fear of judgment was really holding me back. Mm -hmm. And it was just completely made up in my head. Um, but once I had friends and family that were listening, I started to elevate my game. I started to get new podcast art. I started to get a new trailer. I got a new mic. I got a new setup because I knew the people that were actually listening. And it was really through that support that things really picked up. And it was around after episode 300, where the uh, podcast started ranking in the top 10% of out of 2.7 million podcasts in the whole world. And that was like such a cool feeling. And uh, I was able to complete the podcast every day for a challenge. Uh, and since then, I've been publishing episodes on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And really what I do is I, I talk about all these things that we're talking about here. I talk about lessons and stories that I'm learning from competing in endurance events, but really it's more so about building endurance for everyday life. Because one of the things that we've talked about is I believe that it's not necessarily about the race or whatever the goal is. It's all about the person that you become along the way in pursuing it. Right. And so uh, that's a little bit about the, the podcast, but it is really podcasting is an endurance game because it's, it's a, it's a matter of being consistent over a long period of time in the same way that you need to be consistent over a long period of time, uh, to train for an endurance race. Mario, so much good stuff in there. I don't, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, obviously first off, congrats on a top 10% podcast, man. That is Thank That's you. Awesome. And I, I had no idea until you just said that. It was 
Mario's a super humble guy, ladies and gentlemen. Um, he had definitely did not mention that when we were initially speaking. Yeah. <laughs> so that's um, but I think it's a testament to follow through, commitment, consistency, and daily action, right? And you know, there's a, a couple of different ways that that I could go with um, you know, next questions, but I think what would be helpful for the audience is first to understand that you know, the consistency with what Mario did for his podcast is so directly applicable to whatever you're going through in life. Again, whether it is parenting, whether it is your job, your business, um, your fitness um, endeavors, whether, you know, whatever you're, you're doing in your personal life, it is so directly applicable. Like we have to not focus on how we feel often and focus on what we need to do, right? Um, Somebody that I used to know and study and and learn from was Trevor Moad, right? And mental conditioning consultant, um, amazing human. He has left a legacy um, from his teachings. And, you know, that was something that he had always taught was just what is the next best behavior, right? Regardless of how you love that, right? Next, next best behavior, Um, you know? And so again, just putting feelings aside, what needs to be done, and then something that I think is, um, you know, to take away from what Mario has done here is act on that inspiration, right? When you do get those moments of inspiration, take advantage of it and act on it. I, it's so funny that you say that because it's something that I used to write down consistently as I reflected on, you know, what made me successful in different moments of time was acting on inspiration because then you can create momentum. Then you can create your daily rhythm, right? And your consistency, Um question for you, Mario. First off, when did you start? Like, do you remember your start date uh, during during the year, what your start and end date was? And no worries if you don't remember. I think it was, I, I think it was November 2nd of 2020. Okay. And I published every day for a year. And so I finished uh, November of 2021. Beautiful. So here's the point I'm trying to make is that was November 2nd, a like a special date to you is that your birthday with no special date, right? No, Pointing, no better time to start than now is, is what I'm getting at, right? Like, so true. You didn't set all right at the beginning of the year on my birthday at this date. It was, here's the thought I have. I'm taking the action right now. You want to touch on that at all or? Yeah, because there's this quote that I really like from Brendan Burchard, and what he talks about is exactly this. And he says, no matter how small you start, start something that matters. Mm. And no matter how small you start, start something that matters. When you first click record on a podcast, there's a good chance that two or three people are going to listen to it unless you you know, really like build up uh, an audience prior to launching it. Mm-hmm. And you're going to start small. Coming back to what we talked about, starting with a 5K or what, at wherever you're at, start small, get that initial feeling of success, start to build the consistent habit of showing up and then go from there. It's the exact same principle if you're trying to train for a race or if you're starting a podcast, if you're trying to write a book, launch a business, it's the exact same thing. And so I just love that quote. And I love that idea. Mm. Um, it's a, uh, I mean, obviously he's a stud. And so if anyone doesn't know, uh, Brendan Burchard, like definitely check him out. He's got some quality content that he puts out and typically in bite-sized chunks, which I like that you do that with your podcast as well. Mario is, you know, it's easy to digest five to 15 minute segments quick takeaway, right. And can easily implement. And then you have interviews, right. Which, which is awesome too. Um, pretty similar to the the structure of this podcast, like something that's easy to digest and easy to start. Um, I love that quote, by the way. And so I don't know if that spoils the the later version of favorite quote at all. So no, I, that was just a little inspiration. <laughs> I was just acting on inspiration. Like there you, you talked about, because <laughs> yeah. there's such a, it's such a good point that you mentioned though, because that inspiration is so powerful, yeah. but it fades very quickly. Quickly, and what you're what you're left with is you're left with a like a, a decision. Do mm-hmm. I do I wait for that feeling of inspiration to come back, or do I take the action anyways? 
And I just love that point that you made. I think it's almost, it's, it's very applicable to what James Clear talks about in Atomic Habits, right? We, we don't rise to the level of our goals, right? We, we fall to the, the level of our systems. And I, I probably butchered that in one way or another, but um, point being those systems that we have in place is what's going to carry us through the next best behavior, regardless of how we're feeling on X given day or an X given moment. One question I have for you that I think will be valuable for the audience to know is, you know, people probably want to start things on the side, right? You had your podcast that you were doing on top of being a father, being a husband, being a friend, being an employee, right? An endurance athlete. How did you implement recording a podcast every single day for a year and have continued to do it consistently three times a week? for the time, like since that time, how did, did you have a structure or how did you, like, I'm sure people have questions around, you know, the time management aspect of it, the focus management, was this ad hoc spur of the moment, you feel inspired real quick, let me just jot it down, did you plan out 30 minutes at 5.30 p.m. after the workday every day, like, you know, can, can you talk to some of, some of that? Yeah, the system has completely evolved over time. Nice. Initially, when I started, I didn't have a I didn't have a system. Mm-hmm. I was just like, all right, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and do this in the morning, or um, I'm gonna try and get it done over lunch, or yeah. I'm feeling good now. Like, let me just knock this out. A lot of times, it was, oh man, I've got to record a podcast. I committed to this. It's like nine o'clock at night. And I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I come up with? What do I talk about? It was a lot of procrastination. It was a lot of kind of ad hoc publishing, but I was committed. And so I did it every single day. And really what I learned was it wasn't until I would be busy on the weekends. Like I would have a race that I would have traveled to, or we would have like a family event that we would have to do. And I knew that I would be in another location where I would have something going on for two to three days or three to four days. And so what I would do is I would have to plan out and, and record multiple episodes in one day. Mm. And so I started to fall into a habit of batching my episodes. Smart. And once I started to batch my episodes, it wasn't really until the last like 50 episodes, I went through a slog of doing an episode literally every single day. Mm -hmm. And then it wasn't until I started to figure out like, hey, I could take one hour and I could record four to five episodes and then schedule those out over the week. And that's going to be a much more efficient use of my time Mm -hmm. if I block that time off than if I take 30 minutes every single day to try and record one episode. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's a process. You got to get your, get your like recording, like set up. You've got to get your mind, right. You got to get your notes out. You've got to try multiple takes. You've got to edit things a little bit and then you click publish. But if you can batch that and you can do that in one, at one point in time for an hour, two hours, knock out as many episodes as you can, and then schedule those out, you're in a much better spot. And that's really been my strategy for creating content now um, that I'm a little bit more advanced in figuring out like my schedule um, because, you know, I've got a lot going on and my, my time with my family is like sacred to me. It's super important that I walk my girls to uh, daycare every morning. It's super important to me that we have dinner as a family, that we read books at night, that we hang out, we go for walks. And so I, uh, I just do time blocking essentially where I know I've got to get my workouts done from this point in time. I've got to uh, get my, my actual work done. I've got coaching calls. I've got recording podcasts. I've got creating content. Uh, I've just created a a schedule um, every single week where I block off different segments of time to do that one activity. A lot to digest there. Um, First off, I would say, ladies and gentlemen, Mario is a very stand-up guy. And and a takeaway, though, is like you prioritize what's important to you. And you make time for what's important, right? Family, right? Um, Your business, your your training, right? The podcast, service work, 
content creation, like the things that fill your cup, right, is what you prioritize and then you execute on it. Um, for the actual implementation of daily action, I think what's important to note for the audience and, and a key takeaway is that first, Mario got started, right? You got started and mm -hmm. it wasn't perfect, right? What Not it was, at all. Well, like every master was once a disaster or, um, <laughs> you know, like it, it's a, a beautiful mess to start, right? And then over time, you learn what works for you. You learn, you get smarter, right? You start batching your your content creation. You start batching your podcasts together. Um, it's right in line. I, I don't know if you, I follow a, a guy named Dan Martell. Not sure if you have, you know, you know, Dan Martell. Yeah, I actually just started following him. I'm not okay. sure, but yeah, I'm somewhat familiar with him. He's a, he's a stud. And for anyone listening, Dan Martell, um, serial entrepreneur, investor, runs uh, SaaS Academy, big time endurance athlete, um, you know, content creator. And I listened, I listened to a, a recent podcast with him where he talked about a 10 year commitment that he made mm -hmm. to release one YouTube video every once a week for 10 years. And so it was his decade long commitment. And to this day, hasn't missed an episode, right? Um, but what he does is, is similar to you, Mario, he got smart, right? And so once a quarter, he calls, you know, he blocks out time for I don't know if it's like a three day weekend or two day weekend or whatever, but he sets up and records 13 episodes that he can then release once a week over the quarter, right? So it's the same idea of, of your batching, right? So getting smarter, doing upfront work that can then pay itself out over time, you know, when you strategically schedule it and, and plan it out. So um, point being, ladies and gentlemen, get started and just trust that you'll figure it out along the way and you'll get smarter. You'll figure out what works for you, what doesn't work for you, and will ultimately lead you to get results that, that you're looking for and that you're committed to. So Mario, I, I, you know, I know that we're coming up on, on time here and you, I don't know if there's anything else that you specifically want to dive into. You mentioned your, your coaching business. Um, do you, do you want to touch on that a little bit? Maybe tell the, the audience about what that side of your story is. Absolutely. And so, I mean, I've always viewed myself as an athlete and as a coach like my whole life. So growing up, one of my, my biggest role models was my dad and he was a high school football coach and a teacher. And nice. uh, the biggest thing that, that he always taught us as athletes and as his kids was that, you know, sports are a lot, a lot like life. And it's all about how you handle success and how you handle failure. And so he always used sports as a way to teach people life lessons. And so I just absorbed that as a kid. And so as I've been going through this, uh, this journey of endurance sports, I've learned things that I've been able to apply to my business and things that I've been able to apply to my relationships and things that I've been able to apply to work. And it's, that's basically the type of transformation that I want to help other people through. And what, what I really believe is that we are just far more capable than we even realize. And the, the sad part is that some people go their whole lives without even realizing how powerful they really are. Mm. And so I think the way that I view my coaching and my purpose is to help people realize their potential, to help people have the, the inspiration and to have the courage to sign up for a big challenge, to sign up for a big goal. And I help them provide the, the mindset, the strategies and the tools to accomplish impossible goals and to help them become the best version of themselves along the way. And so I do that through uh, endurance coaching. I do that through success coaching, um, helping people uh, with, the, with their podcasts. Um, and so if you're anybody who's going after a big goal and you're looking for some help, you're looking for some accountability, you're looking for uh, a way to elevate your mindset, then that's the type of person that I love working with. Amazing. Um, a man of service, right? I know it's a common theme that we've talked about is learning through your life experiences and then giving back, right? So awesome stuff. Awesome stuff, Mario. Um, thank you for sharing that. We will have Mario's contact information here after our fire round of questions that I have coming for you. So right. 
Question one, Mario, is what is your favorite quote? Okay, I've got two, actually. Okay. One of them is the man in the arena quote. And oh, it's God. so long that I'm not going to say it, um, but you just need to look it up because Beautiful. it is a quote that I come back to um, in those days where I feel like I'm in the arena, mm -hmm. where I feel like I'm struggling, where I feel like there's criticism, where I feel like there's doubt. I come back to the quote um, of the man in the, in the arena. And so I want people that are listening to this to look that up. Um, but another one that comes to mind is just from the Bible. It's this, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And uh, my faith is really something that fuels the endurance that I have. And it fuels the, the love and service that I show up with. Beautiful. Um, second, thank you. Thank you. Um, and I know I'll be looking that up and I, I know the quote couldn't, couldn't say off the top of my head, but um, I know you've talked about it in your podcast too. So second question is favorite. It used to be favorite book, but I have transitioned it to whatever you, you know, what, what's your favorite learning material? It could be book, podcast, YouTube channel, right? Whatever material you, you think, do you, what comes to mind for you? Yeah. So when it, when it comes to books, I think getting the right book at the right time can change your life. And for me, the right book at the right time was Mindset by Carol Dweck. And this is a book that I read right as I graduated from college. And I realized that no one was ever going to force me to learn anything ever. It's literally just up to me if I want to learn and grow and improve now that I'm out of, of college. And it's a book that helps you understand the importance of a growth mindset. And so it's just called Mindset by Carol Dweck. And I really recommend uh, that one. Uh, in terms of podcasts, one of my favorites is just The Mindset Mentor by Rob Dial. It's mm -hmm. a, a really powerful uh, podcast with episodes around 15 to 20 minutes all around overcoming and, and creating an empowering mindset. And so those are probably the, the two ones that stand out to me. It's funny you say mindset um, around the college years. It was a required reading for us at that time in college and one that I did not follow through on the re required reading. It's, it's funny, like, you know, you get out of college, you get out of when you're being forced to do things. And then for, in my experience of life, like that's when I became similar to you, like responsible for my, my own learning and my own development. And just that, let that natural curiosity take place. And um, so I literally still have the book. I got it back <laughs> from a friend who I uh, gave it to a couple of years back. And I literally have it on my desk right over here um, with some highlights from way back when, but never finished it. So that's so funny. From, just from the conversations that I've had with you, though, I mean, you you embody a growth mindset. And I think that it, that's, that's apparent from our conversation and from uh, your own podcast and the seeds of success. And so honestly, I, I don't, I don't think you need to read it. Um, and that's why I said, it's like the right book at the right time though, yeah. somebody who's just right out of college or somebody who maybe is doubting their ability to do something, if that's a big goal or a dream that you have, that's the type of book that I would recommend. I love that. The right book at the right time. It's almost, it, it's similar to you meet the right person at the right exactly. time. Exactly. You meet that right mentor at the right time, like ultimately changes the entire trajectory of your life forever. So good 100%. stuff. 100%. Um, next question, bucket list item. What you, what you got on the, on the bucket list? So for bucket list, I put spend a year traveling uh, with my family abroad. I love it. So, Wow. I mean, that's just something that I will probably combine some endurance events like around around yeah. the world with no that. Way to but, see the world. <clears throat> yeah, but just traveling as a family, that's something that that we love to do. It opens up your mind, opens up your you just learn so much from uh, your own culture and from other people. Yeah. Um, any anywhere in particular or just anywhere that you'd be you know, um, that, that you and your wife have talked about in the past or just. just uh, we just, love. We love Southeast Asia. Uh, we went to Thailand for our honeymoon, um, right. New Zealand, Australia, South America, Asia. I mean, we want to go all over the world. <laughs> yeah, the world. Um, good stuff. And, you know, I think super important just to cross cultural intelligence, man. Like nothing can compare. Like you can't watch movies and you can't read books and you can't 
you know, you can, you can sure do all those things, but you know, there's nothing like actually doing the thing, right? You can only read so many books about endurance sports. You can only read so much and see so much about world travel, but to actually get out, meet people, connect with individuals across the world. Um, good stuff. I love to hear it. Last question. This was something that uh, kind of interestingly, um, going back to the meet the right mentor at the right time, this comes from a mentor of mine when I was trying to make a, a big decision in my life, a career path, which way to go. And he, you know, I'd been struggling. He asked me the question, what would 65 year old Colin say to yourself right now? Right. And so it put me in this headspace of, you know, projecting into the future, right. And looking back on my life from, you know, the perspective of, you know, what, what do I ultimately want to do and what do I most mostly not want to regret doing, right? And so that's my question to you, Mario, is what would 65-year-old Mario say to you and yourself right now and however you see fit? I love this question because it's something that I, I think about pretty much every single day. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it would be you're right where you need to be and savor these moments. And when I have that thought is when I'm holding my daughter, uh, Ruby, who's six months right now and holding my daughter, Ellie, who's two and a half. And I just think about what would 65 year old me or 55 year old me, they would give up everything to come back and be in my current situation and just have these moments with my girls, um, have these, these moments, uh, with my wife. And there, there's nothing better than uh, just sitting and being present with your kids. And so it's something that I actually think about a lot. And so it's, you're right where you need to be and just savor these moments. I love it, man. You never get that moment back. And so the so the true mindset of being appreciative of that present moment, right? And I think it comes back to that whole uh, topic of experience that we talked about earlier right? Just being super grateful for that moment, sharing it with the people that you love. And man, I, I love the response. And I, and I, it's refreshing to hear that you think about that often. So good stuff. Well, Absolutely. Mario, um, thanks for coming on the show. Where can people find you for your, your podcast, Instagram content, your business, your coaching, where, where can people find you? What's the best way to get in contact with you and to check out your content? Yeah. And, and first of all, I just want to say thank you so much, Colin, for having me on your, your podcast. I think that you are, are planting some amazing seeds right mm -hmm. now. Like I can just tell from the way that you're showing up, the way that you're committed, the way that you are, you, you want to learn and grow and serve other people. And I just want to encourage you to keep going and keep doing your thing because you're, you're going to be, you're, you're doing amazing things and it's just going to continue to grow. And so thank you for having me. And then um, for anybody that wants to get in touch with me, the best way to do that is just to follow me on Instagram, it's just mario.minert. Uh, we'll probably have that in the, in the show notes. Um, follow me and, and say hi and, and tell me what's one challenge that you're working towards right now, um, because I want to encourage you and I want to help you reach your goals. And then the other thing is just the podcast. It's called Talking Endurance and Mastery. You can listen to that podcast anywhere um, there, anywhere you listen to your podcast. And so we just love to connect with, with people that are going after big goals, people that are, are trying to uh, become the best version of themselves and, and people that are just grateful for uh, the person that they're becoming along the way. And don't be afraid to just reach out to simply connect with Mario. That's how we're, yeah. that's how really we're talking right now. I, I heard his podcast. I stumbled across it because I was looking up a, a gentleman named Matt Choi. Sure enough, there's Mario's podcast with him. Uh, I was listening, loved everything Mario had to say, loved how he conducted his interviews, the, the shows that he was putting out on his podcast. And I reached out. Right. And here we are. You never know where one reach out, one connection can lead you again, going back to that, your entire life can change in, in one small action that you take. So, um, Mario, thank you very much for coming. It really has been a pleasure to have you on and um, to connect with you here. And, and thank you for sharing everything with with the audience. And never know, maybe we'll have to do a round two at some point in the future here. Once I get to that 200 podcast, <laughs> at like a thousand. So <laughs> yeah, no, I, I love that. That'd be, that'd be super fun, man. Cool. 
Well, Mario, thank you very much, sir. Um, give my, my best to your family and we'll talk to you soon. All right, man. Thank you. All right. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Seeds of Success podcast. I hope that you found this to be valuable and enjoyable with some actionable takeaways that you can implement into your daily life starting right now. If you did enjoy this episode, can you please do me a huge favor and share this with one friend? Just one friend is all that I ask. And if you could please leave a five-star rating and review. You can also follow me on Instagram at Coolin2322. That's Coolin with two O's. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, keep planting, keep harvesting, keep sowing seeds with positive energy one day at a time. And I will see you on the next episode.